Brace yourself for some shocking stories depicting confrontations between belligerent airport passengers and law enforcement. Captured on candid airport police body cams, these four altercations shed light on the sky-high difficulties law enforcement officers face protecting traveler safety on the daily. Our first airport altercation involves not one, but three upstanding citizens who got themselves into trouble at the airport. On April 29, 2021, Broward County deputies hurried to Fort Lauderdale Airport, responding to an alleged assault in the Spirit Airlines terminal. A worried caller reported three females battering a male passenger with a hamburger. Talk about wasting food in the worst way possible. Oh, I was waiting on I too. I said, no, you want to go out the gate. And she just kept coming back at me and started disrespecting me in front of my kids. Okay, in front of my family. Her friend right there, the little short one. Rough on me, started disrespecting me in front of my kids. Okay, talking rough and rude. My kids were there, the witnesses. She came off the road, she started talking about, you better get up on my face, this and that. Uh, this and that. Hey, hey, hey. Here, see? hey, see? What's hey. wrong with your hey, neck? Hey, stop. Hey, what's wrong with your neck? She's in my face. She's in my face. This man is clearly on drugs. She's in my face. This man is clearly on drugs. Alright, that's fine. So back up. This man is clearly on drugs. So y'all letting that fly. What can he do? We haven't done anything. Back up. Back up. Arriving on scene, officers observed the described group of women locked in a screaming match with the man. The man explained that he was waiting in line for a Burger King carryout with his family. Back up. Don't even say anything to I didn't even get a chance to ask you what happened. Uh, I didn't even ask you what the happened. And then you should do that. You should well, do that instead of being in my face. Minute. Stop jumping on me. You should do that instead of being in my face. You should do that instead of being in my face. All right. Nobody is hey, did they order? We did order. Okay. Yeah. Hey, are they with you? Hey. Hey, are you guys all together? We're not all together because we're safe. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Hey, she comes down or I throw her out. No, she's not fine. She is fine. No, I am fine. That lady is fine. Mama, mama. Okay. Exactly. I'm going over there. Out of nowhere, the three women rudely cut ahead in line. Politely objected, one lashed out in response by weaponizing her whopper. Lettuce, cheese, and patty flying, she whipped the burger at his head. Stunned with special sauce dripping down his face, the man alerted police. What happened with me? My wife, my wife, my, my wife was here. Okay. My two kids were with me. We were in line. Now they have that black girl thing. So I'm about to be next. The short girl comes and just goes right to the bar and starts doing it. I said, "Ma'am, we're in line here." She ignored me the first time. I said, "Excuse me, ma'am, we're in line here." She said, "Oh no, I was in line." I said, "Ma'am, I was. You weren't. You weren't in line. You were all here." Oh yes, I was. I, I stepped out and came back in. I said, "No, you weren't." And she just started getting loud and rude she for was me. Like, what you gonna do about it? What you gonna do? I'm here now. You she just, talk to me she said that to like me. So my two kids turned around, saw the violence and started walking away. And she just kept it on like, pop my face, ain't gonna do shit, blah, blah. So and you see how it's acting up now. And, and it was only the short one there. Her tall friend just showed up. Just now. And now it's like the rival. The, the students were here and all that. They said it. So I came, I left it at home. And I came back over here. You know? So my wife wanted to get up with my daughter to go there to get something to eat, and then start and then start with her. It started with her like, "What are you looking at? You saw it. It just happened." Yeah, yeah, yeah. so and when I tried to go there and ask what was going on, uh -huh. I wanted to ask the cashier. Uh -huh. She started saying, "Oh, oh," and she got in our face. I'm like, "Hey, let me That's get what she did to us. Yes, same thing. Same thing she did to us. All right, let me try to calm it down. Just, oh, no, no, I, we'll just do. have a seat we'll over here. here. That's why we well, what time does your flight leave?" As deputies interviewed witnesses to verify events, two of the offending females approached, continuing their verbal attacks on the victim. They also accused the man of intoxication, despite zero evidence beyond the women's claims.
The officers focused on de-escalating the situation through non-violent crisis intervention tactics, but cooperating with the investigation wasn't on the menu for these three disorderly passengers. The increasing nature of aggression, plus the women's refusal to calm down, left the deputies no choice but to restrain and then arrest the combative airport trio. In a bizarre twist, they reacted by blaming none other than racism itself for their predicament. Moral of the story, victim mentality won't bail you out when you're clearly the perpetrator. Ultimately, all three of the women were charged with disorderly conduct based on multiple eyewitness accounts, with police disputing their victimhood claims. If you thought these Hamburglers were the craziest airport offenders, then brace yourself for more turbulence with our second shocking airport incident. Have ID? Yeah, of course I do. I'm on an airplane. So, I mean, I don't understand. I'm a tall guy. I mean, the, the airplane's very tight, so I didn't do anything. I, I literally took a piss and sucked half the time. Do you have anything to drink while you're on the airplane? No, there's no, they're not serving any alcohol. Our next airport debacle features 36-year-old Scott Russell Grandin. Grandin's tailspin into delinquency began on March 25th, 2021 as a commercial flight prepared for departure from St. Louis to Tampa, Florida. Seven oh four, twenty six. Four, okay. Still gotta get his bag because they put him to the front. His bag's in the back. Okay. A woman was falling asleep and he groped her up or grabbed up yeah, her leg. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then when he got up to use the restroom, he did it again. Okay. Um, they, they were separated. The flight attendant said he kind of gave the attitude of, oh, it was them, not me. I got the two women up at the top waiting for him to come off, and the flight attendant said he seemed to be under the influence. Okay. A distressed flight attendant summoned police to handle passenger Scott Russell Grandin, accused of disturbing the woman seated next to him despite her visible attempts to sleep. Hey, sir. How are you today? Do you have your license on you? You don't have your license on you? What happened aboard the aircraft? Huh? Nothing happened. Something happened with a young lady on the aboard the aircraft while you all were flying. Well, she's alleging that something did happen, so. Okay. What's that? 
I slept and took a piss. That's about it. Okay, hold on, sir. Yeah, once you get there, it'll have airlines. Hold on. Do you have your license on you? Uh, okay. Am I being detained or what? Yes, sir, you are. Why? Well, as I just explained to you, young lady alleges that you groped her inappropriately. I know. It's a very close aircraft. I'm seven foot tall, so okay. she can say what she ever she wants to say. I haven't touched anybody. Okay. As Grandin denied all allegations, the crew maintained that he had grabbed the victim after she began dozing off amidst the night flight. Have I eaten? Yeah, of course I do. I'm on an airplane. So, I mean, I don't understand. I'm a tall guy. I mean, the, the airplane's very tight, so I didn't do anything. I, I literally took a piss and sucked half the time. Did you have anything to drink while you are on the airplane? No, there's no, they're not serving any alcohol. How come they moved I went to take a piss and I came back, they moved me. And I sat there and I was... Hey, Questioned by responding officers, Grandin claimed zero memory of the alleged incident. Though notably insistent that he hadn't consumed alcohol, his erratic temperament left police suspicious that intoxication had clearly played a role in the incident. Sir, go ahead and take off the... Uh... It, it was an in-flight in flight incident. Well, then we'll call uh, out FBI. Okay. So we'll still gotta take... Okay. Yeah, you guys, are you guys touching me? Are you guys touching me? Oh, it's weird. It's weird how that works. Here you go. You stop touching me, dude. You're being patted down, sir. Okay. Oh, I'm being patted down. It's got an airplane. What do you think I'm going to cover? Carry a bomb? We're going to carry a big for your fat bald head? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna take off my mask here. Hold on, I can't breathe. Hold on, I can't breathe. Oh my goodness, I can't breathe. Take my mask off. Yeah. Yeah. You see what you're doing to me? You, no. You're doing this, pig. No. You're doing this, pig. You're doing this. You calling the FBI? Because you're black? Yeah. Shot. Okay. Come on. As the interrogation continued. Grandin resisted officer instructions multiple times. His aggression escalated dramatically, even daring cops to charge him with crimes while he kept ridiculing police. But Grandin's defiance would backfire badly. Everything's about me, bro. No. Hey, guess what? You put the handcuffs on me, didn't you? You're doing your Let's job. Go. You're doing your job. I can't. I can't walk. I can't sit down. Hey, come on. I can't, I can't walk. The pants are down. No, no, I'm going to fall and hurt myself. You're going to be trying to charge with the soul. Come on, no, sir. No, Let's pull go. my pants up. Let's no, go. Pull my pants up. Pull them up. Let's pull go. My, no, I can't. My pants are down. I, feel, I don't feel safe. Pull my pants up. Come on, let's go. No, pull my pants. I don't feel safe walking downstairs with my pants down. I tried to explain it to you, you didn't want to hear it. Well, why am I being arrested? I haven't made Have a seat. seat. Have a seat. You guys are cute. Have a seat. Okay. 
Given the victim's statement as well as Grandin's aggression towards authorities, he was arrested then taken into custody upon landing in Tampa, Florida. The Federal Bureau of Investigations even took interest in the disruptive airline episode that diverted staff resources. Scott Russell Grandin was indicted for abusive sexual contact aboard an aircraft, serving 22 months in prison with probation and registered as a sex offender. If you think mixing alcohol and flying makes for bad landings, this weapon-wielding passenger really shouldn't have cleared TSA checkpoints. Sorry, say again? My, my right top. Taking you out right now. Um, oh, I can't even move. Sorry, I gotta right. try to, let me come around. No, here, I have that on. Jeffrey Hefter discovered the hard way that airline weapon transportation restrictions aren't flexible suggestions. On November 8, 2021, Monroe County Sheriff's deputies responded to Key West International Airport after a loaded gun was discovered at a TSA checkpoint. Running late for his flight home, Hefter rushed through security screening when eagle-eyed TSA scanners detected trouble inside his carry-on. Trained agents pulled the nervous passenger aside, urgently confirming if Hefter owned the flagged bag. $13,000 where we always say that TSA will be in contact with you, reference a civil penalty up to a certain amount. So, yeah. I mean, but I don't, I would like to place like a sick, little sick by what, what did you say? Um, okay. Sir, we're gonna walk out of the checkpoint and into our office right here where you may have a seat, okay? That'd be fine. Um, Just come around this way? Well, we're gonna carry all the stuff and walk with you, okay? Um, sir, we're gonna go into the office. Do you have everything? Uh, no, I don't have a driver's Sir, we're gonna need that in our office. <laughs> All the way. There's one in the chain? Yeah. This was in the... This was inside the weapon. One was in the chain. And then where was that? This was in, this, laying beside it in, in the pack. To their dismay, he answered affirmatively. Peering inside, Investigators uncovered a loaded semi-automatic pistol locked and ready for action. With six live rounds nestled in the Ruger's magazine, Hefter had enough single firepower to injure dozens. An additional magazine with six more bullets compounded concerns. What happened? I, I grabbed the wrong bag. That's all. I totally grabbed the wrong bag. Yeah, that, that should have stayed in my truck. My truck is still staying here until Monday. And I'm coming back. Uh huh. And I literally just grabbed the wrong bag. That's all it is. What, what is the trip? Are you going for... Uh, I, I brought some product here for Mercury High Performance Racing. They have a big... 40 to 11, holding an accident, no injuries. Sorry, go ahead. They, they have a, uh, some type of race or something here. And they hired us yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to bring some stuff here. So I brought the stuff here. And I'm leaving my vehicle here, flying back to Fond du Lac. And then I'm going to fly back on Sunday uh -huh. to pick up the product and bring it back to Fond du Lac. And I 
Okay, so you on. have, uh, we're going to go out this door here. Oh. oh, I see. Okay, so you grabbed the wrong bag. What is, is this bag you, what do you do with this bag? You this go bag, like, to the range like a, or? Yeah, well, it's, a, it's a range bag. Okay. Um, it just, I, I throw it in the truck uh -huh. when I travel, but not when I fly. <laughs> of course. And I needed stuff, I needed a bag just to put all my here. stuff in, so I didn't have to check a bag and I grabbed this one. Okay. And I didn't go through it. That's all I can do. In his defense, the suspect claimed he accidentally swapped his luggage before heading to catch his early morning departure. Apparently, Hefter traveled on assignment, delivering racing event supplies from Wisconsin for work. Pressed further, he insisted on simply mixing up backpack options hurriedly on his short weekend adventure. And you say you, know, you drove here in your vehicle? Yes. And you were flying back to Wisconsin? Yes, and then coming back on Sunday to pick my vehicle back up, load it up, pick my vehicle back up and drive it back to Wisconsin. I'm, I'm, I'm honest to God that this is a legitimate stage now. I feel sick to my stomach. Have a good night, Richard. I end with a hero, Tango, and a Romeo. No better one. Mm. Hold on. This water. Thank you. Oh, I just opened it. Go to the other side, pat them down. Yeah. I'll open up that door. I did, I did. there's a reason. I got dropping issues. Put this in the back of the car. Delta 4091, we might not have to the assistant state's attorney was contacted and reviewed the incident to include the totality of the circumstances. They advised there was enough probable cause to arrest Jeffrey. They arrested Jeffrey and transported him to jail. Sorry, say again? My, my right cuff. Taking you out right now. Um, oh, I can't even move. Sorry, I got to right, try to, let me come around. Okay. I got your seatbelt off. Seatbelt's off? It, it, it never clicked in all the way when it... Oh, okay. Take you out right now and get you out and get them off of you, okay? Thank you very much. apologize that they're... There we go. Go ahead, step forward. Take a step, step up. Sir, just right over here, have a seat. 6112, arrival at 1341. I got his ID here. Jeffrey did possess a concealed carry permit from Wisconsin, but dispatch could not confirm its validity. After an investigation, they left it up to the assistant state's attorney to review and determine the consequences of his negligent actions. Jeffrey now faces criminal charges for carrying a concealed loaded weapon as an airline passenger in a transportation hub, which is a huge breach of national security guidelines. If carelessly toting guns during airport security checks seems too dumb for words, just watch as this parting passenger's brainless bomb threat halts an entire airport. Just because we already have a 
conversation about madness. Okay. So I, I suggested if I was to say this. A Florida man threatened everyone at the airport with a false bomb threat. That itself is pretty self-explanatory, but as the saying goes, truth is stranger than fiction. On February 2nd, 2023, officers responded to a bomb threat reported at Orlando International Airport in Florida. The situation unfolded when a passenger, accompanied by his wife, expressed frustration over baggage fees during a Spirit Airlines flight and claimed there was a bomb on the plane. You need to send me to you or anybody else? Okay. I'm just arriving at the desk. What do you guys have? I don't take Josh in here. And then uh, he said, you want me to set it again? In response to the passenger's statement, the airline supervisor promptly contacted 911 and awaited the arrival of officers and other necessary services. Subsequently, officers reached the gate, engaging with airline staff and passengers to gather more information about the incident. The suspect argued with officers about luggage fees, but that wasn't all. He even hinted at a bomb on the plane. This immediately caused alarm for everyone involved. The supervisor reported the threat, leading to a swift security response. How you doing, sir? Can I see your ID, please? All right, obviously, sir, you made a comment. Now we gotta get to it. There, there's certain things that you cannot say. You're a vet, I'm a vet. You know there's certain things that you can say. Like what I said was, okay, I bet you if I would say they were gonna have a play. Yeah, she said we could not have that. Just because we already had a conversation about madness. Okay. So I, I suggested if I was to say this, mm -hmm. and she took that as you're saying it. That's okay. why I, that's what I said what I was saying. And the conversation started with the bags. Okay. So they wanted to speak for the bags. I was saying that for 10 years, we've been carrying these same two bags. Mm -hmm. This spirit, I thought I was talking about once a month. Okay. And they go as a personal item. Okay. We never had any. That's all. Whatever reason, today they just have to go to the side. So we went to the side, and it doesn't fit in the, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, 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 yeah, and it, I understand you're upset on that. It's just there's certain words to you. And, and, and that's what it was mentioned. I made, I made a mistake. And this is what happened. It's, it, it, you know, so now we got this. Because this is what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be straight up. Back to back. Back to back. I'm not going to be as you. Now we're going to have to be playing the whole plane. We got to get everybody out. We got to check in and run it through and see if there's any problem. The supervisor felt the need to contact emergency services. Witnesses, including airline staff, verified they heard what the passenger said. He acknowledged his mistake and realized it was foolish. Hey, do me a favor. If everybody could just step back, please. Please, 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 okay. just step back. We're not, you're not getting on the plane right now. Okay? You're not even getting on the plane right now. We're going to deplane right now, so don't even worry about that. You're not going to miss the... Yeah, yeah. We have... All right. Okay. No, we'll put the door. Right? We'll put the door down. Okay. That guy, he never made it on the plane, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, everybody, 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 everybody. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, Maria, have the uh, canine come down. He, ever, he never made it on the plane. Oh, yeah. oh, he never made okay. No, no, oh, okay. man. Jamie, oh, you were asking that. If you hadn't asked me that, I could have told you. What's her canine name? The canine, the dog's down. The flight attendant said at seat 13A, there's a panel that a passenger pointed out that it had been removed or something. TNA that was loose that wasn't that way before. It's probably just... That's the TSA. Basically, I took the, uh, the, the checkpoint to the gate. 
that's basically, I brought the checkpoint to help. They put the x-ray machine, everything to the game. Yeah, so. No problem, bro. Alright, all right. All set. Thank you. Thank you. Check out everything. Check out everything. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Under aviation protocols, staff instantly contacted authorities regarding the dire public warning. Deputies urgently responded by evacuating all aircraft and locking down takeoff zones until exhaustive K-9 sweeps cleared runways as threat-free. That's his portion, that's the airport um, position, but once the FBI is finished talking to the member, they're gonna have a, have a conversation. I was, in, I was in case you change your life. So, I'm not saying it definitely, but it's like anything else in the world. That's step to them, not us. I would talk to airport administration right now because of what you did. That's the message that you have to do. That's it. You know, but it's 20 years from now. I'm just trying to. Sir, can you just board, please? Just yes. board. Just board. Yeah, just sir. please, okay. just That's please good. board. In the end, the suspect was issued a trespass notice from Orlando International Airport and charged with making a false report concerning planting a bomb, an explosive or a weapon of mass destruction. At this time, the suspect's court case is still ongoing and awaiting trial. The suspect now awaits trial on second degree felony charges for making false statements about concealed explosives in a transportation hub. If convicted, the suspect could face penalties of up to 15 years in prison, 15 years of probation, and a fine of $10,000. If you enjoyed this intriguing true crime video, subscribe to enjoy the thrill. 